No candy. <laughs> Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, some, some supernatural experience that you've never felt before. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You just, I mean, you just in your bed, you hear somebody call you. It's a heart. You wake up like, is that you, Lord? Here I am. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what I'm saying? Because we read a little bit. Of, you know what I'm saying? We read a little bit about. We read. We read a little bit about Samuel. So you like, here am I. You know what I'm talking about? It's a heart. Here am I. Is that you, Lord? Let me tell you something. If you don't repent, everything will be used against you in the day of judgment. But that said, peace to the saints in the room. To the saints that couldn't make it. To the saints watching in on the camera. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right. Y'all up. Everybody was here last week, right? No excuses. Oh, oh first thing you do is call men. That's crazy. Wait, do I have notes? Oh, wait. Oh, shit. What in the world was that? What? Oh, that's all right. Uh, Every. Get up here. The temple, that's right. The temple was built. What else? And then something about Azariah. Come in here. The temple is being mm -hmm. built. Oh, I thought Ezra was downstairs. It's okay, baby. You can go back and play. You can go you play. Can buy good help around here. No, Ezra can go back and play. Okay, go watch your sister. He set up a navy. She can read. Yeah, set up a navy. Why are you always hating? Why are you always worried about what everybody else doing? You said what? You always worried about what everybody else doing. He set up a navy in the water. Set up a navy in the water. That was at the end. Yeah. And, and they found some gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, y'all remember we looked at the temple. Remember we started off with that video? Yeah, you know these people but talk the about video. Mansa Musa. Oh, yeah, that video mm -hmm. with, the, with the thing with yeah. all the different types of gear. Yeah, they're putting. Put them. Them. And they have oh, they show. Pass on wheels. Pass on wheels. That's right. Huh? Video of the temple. Yeah. yeah. What video? Like eight. There's like I think it was eight or twelve. Like the oh, after the after the temple was built, what happened? I'm gonna say. What did what, right. what did King Solomon do? I don't know what I don't know what's wrong with T J. Just fired, bro. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, it. What happened? Uh, what happened after the temple was built? What King Solomon do? He had something to drink. What do you, you know? What I'm saying. What did he do? He went to sleep. What? I did What did he do? Did he eat? I recorded temple part, but I don't remember. I don't recall. I remember the temple and then the baby. Y'all remember him saying a prayer? Oh yeah. Well, okay. Oh yeah. What did he do? Let me tell me about the prayer. Talk about some. Oh yeah. Wisdom. That was before. That was a couple uh, weeks before. Y'all remember? Okay. How was he? How was he praying when after the temple was built? How did he pray? Was he standing? Was he sitting? Was he on his knees? He's on his knees. How was his hands? That's right. Right. Remember, his palms was out like this. Right. His hands were spread out. Right. All right. So then he said a prayer, and he in his prayer he talked about our people in different situations that our people might find ourselves in. And he asked God that if we pray towards the temple, what would happen? That God would listen to us. That God would hear us. Goodness gracious, y'all. Good gracious. I'm so old. Good heart. Gracious heart. Give me some water, please. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and pick it up. Where we leave off? Um, the, the chapter ten. We on chapter ten now. We on chapter ten? Yeah. So let's pick it up at. Should we in Kings chapter 10? First Kings, yeah. Should we stay in Kings or jump over to Chronicles? Let's stay in Kings. Let's do First Kings chapter 10. High start. 
Because I should align with that's Queen Sheba. But check yeah. uh, for, uh, Second Chronicles chapter nine. I think that's the same. We might go to Chronicles. And yeah, people be trying to say Mansa Musa was the richest king ever. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh no, Muhammad might have had him. Though. Yeah, buddy, they just try to erase my man from history. Yeah. Do you guys no. Depending on the dress shoes, it depends, but no, not these. These is pretty comfortable. Crazy, I love my life. I call those church shoes. <laughs> I still call them church shoes, too. <laughs> no, my shoes is work shoes, you know what I'm saying? Dress shoes, you know what I'm saying? The type of shoes I got too nice to be going in church. <laughs> okay. <come> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> then you might want to call them wedding shoes, you know what I'm saying? Look. You know, tuxedo shoes or something, y'all. Don't disrespect my shoes at church. <laughs> it's the same, the Queen of Sheba story. Let's do uh, Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 1. What's the book say? It's Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 1. And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to test Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem. All right, so y'all remember something about Solomon. Solomon was wise. Remember, he prayed for that wisdom, but he is very wise. And everybody knew it, right? And you remember he he used to he used to kind of look into stuff, and you know what I'm saying he is trying to teaching people about the trees and how the trees work and animals and all that stuff. So thinking him kind of like a scientist, right? He kind of understood how the world worked. So that's why Queen Sheba she from way down south, right? She come up, she heard about Solomon. She looking like uh. Let me see what this boy talking about. So she came to ask him what? Hard, Hard questions. questions. And to what do what? At Jerusalem. To, turn, to test him. To test him. Let's see if you're as smart as they say you are. I want to make I sure. Heard about you. I heard that you like the man for knowing things. Like you couldn't, you couldn't Google nobody. Right? It's, it's different. Right? You couldn't really go. You would just hear things word of mouth. So for y'all out there, if y'all want to see the wisdom of Solomon, you can read Proverbs. Some of the Psalms in the Songs of Solomon and also Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is him more, uh, you get more of Solomon in, in his thought process. But uh, check those out though. Ecclesiastes changed my life. So yeah, those are all the books that, that Solomon either, you know what I'm saying, is, is, is accredited for writing or the... Uh, He's a he's a major con contributor yeah. to you know not what I'm so much songs though. I think he wrote, probably wrote like one or two songs. I don't know, but I don't think he wrote yeah, like he got he, yeah he got he got some of the songs. I don't know how many, but yeah, yeah he got some of the songs. Ecclesiastes and Proverbs for sure. Uh, tell them boys to be quiet. And when you read Proverbs, you gotta read it understanding like Yahushua and like in the in the oracles of God, really. You know, or, or those just they, it's just gonna be smart sayings to you, like oh that's a smart saying, but you're not really gonna understand it unless you like really understand the book. Yeah, I mean it's so. So what I say, what I say is, you understand it because it's wise stuff, right? So you understand, but it's a deeper understanding as you learn the book. But that go for the whole book, anyway. yeah. You know, as you learn more of the book, you know, what I'm saying? all everything, everything gets deeper. But even, even just the basic surface knowledge of, of proverbs, you can apply that to your life. It's, 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 uh, mm -hmm. it's definitely wise things. Yeah. So you look at that, and you have Queen of Sheba, uh, Queen Sheba, Queen of Sheba. She came and she wanted to she wanted to test his knowledge because that's what she heard. She couldn't just like Google it and find out what he'd be talking about. So she's like, oh, I'm saying, let me go up here and see what he's talking about. So let's see what happens. And she came to prove to test Solomon with the hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company and camels that bear spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon. She communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. And there was nothing hid from Solomon, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon in the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel, his cupbearers also in their apparel, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of Yahuwah, there was no more spirit in her. Right? So that... Uh, it's important to understand what just happened. What was her reason for going to go see him? Yeah, TJ, why she go see him? Why don't you over there picking your darn nose? We just talked about it. Oh, yeah, okay. The uh, she so she goes to go see him 
because she wanted to ask him hard questions based off of her 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 hearing about his wisdom. Okay, go tell your hard mind. questions would be something that no one really knows. Some things that she want to know that probably no one really knows. Right? So she she goes to him, she asks him all the everything, the, the books that she communed, everything was in her. In other words, everything that was on her mind, she asked him. She just asked him questions. This, that, another. And why does this happen? Okay, well, why did this happen to me? Well, I'll be feeling like this at this time. And the books say nothing was hidden from Saul. In other words, he had an answer for everything. He didn't have to search. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't trying to figure it out. He could just like, hmm. well, that happens because of X, Y, and Z, this, that. Now, he was why he was able to put it together for her. So having that put together for her, it made her excited. Her reason for came out, coming out of there was to understand, was this man what everybody said, right? After she got there, notice the things that the book says that she noticed. It wasn't necessarily just his wisdom. That just opened the door. Watch all the stuff that 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 she looked at him and was like, oh, this is the real thing. Watch this. Read it again. <clears throat> and Solomon told her all her questions. And there was nothing hid from Sodom in which Solomon, which he told her not. Uh-huh. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built. Look, so she saw his wisdom. That's what she came there for. But then she also saw what? In the house that he had built. She also saw the house that he built. And what else? And the food at his table. All the food that was at his table. And the sitting of his servants. The sitting of his servants. So, so far, she's, it was the wisdom. Then after that, it was the richest, the wealthy man. The house that he built. Right? He had all this food. Right? There's a beautiful house. Then after that, the what? The sitting of his servants. And the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers. Right. Now it's the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers. What is she recognizing when she see that? You know, them boys looking like these boys prestige. Prestige. Look what, she they, said, look what they got on. Look what that's they got. a level of respect. She's yeah. saying the way his servants sit for him, the way his 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 uh servants attend to him, she looking like, oh, that's a level. This man is honored out here. So so far, she's like, I like his wisdom, I like his money. I like his respect. Watch this. Locke said it best. Yeah, power. <laughs> and their apparel, his cupbearers also, in their apparel, mm -hmm. his ascent by which he went up into the house of Yehudah, there was no more spirit in it. Right? After that, when they say no more spirit, just imagine a girl just, just lost ready to faint. Lost, you know what I'm saying? The oh, words. oh my goodness. Because he has it set up. He has order. Right? The aesthetics look nice. The people respect him. And he's wide and the man got money. Right? She looking like, oh, he just got it all. He has it all. Right? And Keep his, going. And his servants look amazing. Yeah. Everybody look good. Like, everybody looks look amazing. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Like, your servants got gold on. It's a, I, I mentioned this because it's important. A lot of times we kind of look at it and we just kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, like people, you, you got to say in the Christian, come as you are, right? It's just like, it's just like, yo, you represent God however you want, but you not, you just don't see that in the book, right? Most high God got the most, listen, if you want to say everything's superficial and all of everything is vanity and all that, right? If you look at the most high God, it's always about the show for him too, right? Everything is always pristine. It's always going to look good. Matter of fact, if it don't look good, he's trying to trick you. My man got what? In the kingdom, you know what I'm saying? He got the golden gates. Golden you know gates. With the name. Every the time he builds the tabernacle. Every time he builds the temple. The streets paid with gold. You know what I'm saying? It got to look good. Mm -hmm. It's order to what we do because order makes stuff look good. When we line up, you think we just, oh, uh, no, nah, everybody just line up. Nah, Judah, you over here. Issachar, you over here. Reuben, you know what I'm saying? You over here. Everybody line up in a particular or everything is ordered with God. You know what I'm saying? When he dressed the priest up, would he just put him in anything? No, he gave him detailed garment, and this is what you gotta wear. Mm -hmm. You got them precious stones on the ephod. It's a sign of wisdom. Right? People look at some of this stuff like it's superficial. People, superficial people dress nice and try to look nice because they try to copy wisdom. Mm. Right? 
But having strong order, having a, a great appearance, right? Making sure things are pristine, that is a sign of wisdom. All right, keep going. Watch this. And she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land of your acts mm -hmm. and of your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Howbeit, I did not believe their words until I came and my eyes have seen it. Mm -hmm. And behold, the one half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told to me. Mm -hmm. For you exceed the fame that I heard. Mm -hmm. Happy are your men and happy are your servants which stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Blessed be Yahuwah your God which delighted in you to set you on his throne to be king over Yahuwah your God. To mm -hmm. be king to be king for Yahuwah your God because your God loved Israel to establish to establish them forever. Therefore he made you king over them to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold and spices of great abundance and precious stones. Neither were there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. And the servants also of Haram and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought uh, algum trees and precious stones. And the king made of the algum trees terraces to the house of, the, of Yahuwah and to the king's palace and harps and solid trees for singers. And there were none such seen before in the land of Judah. And King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, besides that which she had brought unto the king. So she turned and went away to her own land, she and her servants. Mm -hmm. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and three score and six talents of gold. Six hundred and sixty-six talents of gold. Besides that which Chapman and merchants brought. And all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of beaten gold went to one target. And 300 shields made, of he, made he of beaten gold. 300 shekels of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. All right. So look what he's doing. He's getting all this gold. He got a bunch of it. He's just making shields out of it. It's stuff that you go to battle with. He making you go to battle with a with it. He making shields out of it. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. This that, and then he go. He ain't put it in the house. He didn't put it in his house. He like, yeah, go go put it over there, like a museum. Go put it over there. All right, keep going. Watch this. Three hundred shekels of gold gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne. Which uh, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne and stays on each side of the sitting place and two lions standing by the stage and 12 lions stood there on one side and on the other upon six steps. Mm -hmm. There was not any like any the like made in any kingdom and all the drinking vessels of King Solomon were of gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was not anything accounted of in the days of Solomon. Right, uh, in the day <laughs> everything was gold, silver wasn't nothing, right? Everything was gold. He said, it Wasn't nothing silver. Watch this, keep going. Drink out of silver, gold cups. For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Haran. Every three years, once came the ships of Tarshish bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks, apes and ivory, apes and peacocks. <laughs> The king and King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God put in his heart. Right. So all the kings would come to Solomon to try to listen to his wisdom, just like Queen Sheba. Right. Because you got to understand, like kings and queens, they dealing with each other. Right. Like, so you got to think of like, like when you got people that that are, you know, what I'm saying like they not. How do you explain this, right? So, me, I work at a bank. So some of the people I got to deal with work at other what? Work at other banks, right? But the president is the president of the United States. So some of the people he got to deal with are what? They presidents of other countries, right? So his group, that's called peers. Right? You play basketball. A lot of people you deal with do what? They play on other teams. Right? So because of that, a king 
a lot of people king deal with, it's going to be kings of other nations. Right? So what, what happens is Queen Sheba, she come like, man, I heard about this. man. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe she got, some, she got some people in her kingdom that visit people in Israel because they friends or something. And they talking about, oh, yeah, no, I love my king, King Solomon, this, that, and the other. They pass it back to them. Then it's whispers around her kingdom about King Solomon. She probably asked somebody, man, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out this. I wonder why it's like that. Hey, I heard King Solomon, you know what I'm saying? No, J. Lil J. J. Lil J. J. said King Solomon is the one. Well, J. J. tell J. J. to come here. King Solomon? King Solomon? Yeah, you ain't never heard of King Solomon? Everybody listen to no darn King Solomon. Let me go see for myself. So she go down. She see for herself. She see. Oh, man, they ain't tell me the half of it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't tell me the half of it. Like, what they, what they told me about you was amazing. And it ain't half of what I witnessed. Right? So then what do you think she going to go home and say? King Solomon, the real deal. That boy, King Solomon, that, that's it. That's the boy. So now her peer groups are other kings and queens. So she gets to tell her other kings, well, no, nah, I just got back. Where you been? No, nah, I just got back from, uh, you know what I'm saying, Israel. What you doing Israel? What you doing out there? Oh, that's the, the new king, King Saul. Yeah, that boy, that boy got it. For real? For real. Now, other kings is like, okay, I'm going to go out there and see what he's talking about, too, because I got some questions. So now all the kings and queens are coming to King Solomon to talk to him. This is important. Watch this. <clears throat> And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and raiment, harness and spices, horses and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. And he reigned over all the kings from the river even unto the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones. He made what? Silver in Jerusalem like stones. Mm hmm And cedar trees he made as the sycamore trees that are in the low plains in abundance. Right? So now you look at it, all the kings will come to him, and as they come to him, guess what they bring with them? Gifts. And they bring with them gifts Year by year. So every time they want to come talk to him, it's like, oh, yeah, I bought you some stuff. You know what I'm saying? They pay honor to him. They pay respects. But they bring gifts to him year by year. And all the kings of the earth hear about him. Who is this testifying of? Yahushua. This is testifying of Yahushua. Yahushua is going to end up being the king of everything. And year by year, all the kings of the earth is going to have to come to him. And bring offerings. Right? So that's what Solomon is kind of said. It's giving you a picture of how it's going to be when Yahushua step in. Right? It even say that silver was like rocks. Right? Like, you know, we got all in our front yard. You know what I'm saying? Got a bunch of rocks everywhere in Las Vegas. You see all these rocks. Like, if you put rocks out there, why do you think you put rocks out there? You got so many. Huh? Yeah, like you, you might want to make it look nice, but what's another reason you just put kind of put rocks out there? Take up some space. What's another reason? Because you got so it's many. low maintenance. You got all the extra rocks. If I put grass there, grass is what's the grass, grass going to do for me? I got to take care of grass, right? And if to take care of grass, what it cost me? What's so rocks? What's what's more expensive? Grass, taking care of grass and having grass or rock? Grass. Rocks? Rocks is more expensive? No, I mean grass. Oh. <laughs> right. what? You got a good, good gracious. Right. Take you a little nap or something. What you do today? Goodness gracious. <laughs> you got a long way to go, boy. You know what I mean? You better suit up for the next one. What? Right? It's so you funny. got it. You're <laughs> 12 years old. What about it? Like, I was still right. Why are you a so you got rocks and you put rocks in the front yard because it's a cheaper alternative if somebody got rocks outside and it go into the you know what I'm saying it go into like the, the walkway or something is anybody gonna care if somebody pick up a rock and take it is anybody gonna care guess what that's what silver was in his kingdom 
didn't nobody care about sale. It didn't mean nothing to nobody. Right? Didn't mean nothing to nobody. It'd just be like, it'd be like you taking a couple of those rocks, going to a different country, and when they see that rock in your hand, you like you looking like, oh no, I just brought this over for a science project. They see a rock in your hand. You have those stones? Can I have them, please? I'll trade you everything I have for them. Like, I got a whole bunch of these at home. That's how Solomon was like. People were sitting there fighting over silver. They look like silver. What we use that silver? That's no way. I use that to, you know what I'm saying, to, to wash my darn dish. Because you know the old time, you know, you have to scrape your dishes with something. I might use this to scrape my dishes. You know what I'm saying? That's, you ever saw a Brillo pad? We might have been using silver for Brillo pad. You know what I'm talking about? We might have some silver just to be like, you know what I'm saying? Let me scrub this real quick. You know what I'm saying? Get this off. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's how wealthy his nation was. Silver was nothing. All the kings are bringing them gifts. And then he said he had a whole bunch. What did he say? He had uh, how many horses? He had 12,000 horsemen. He had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the chariot cities. Right? Chariots hold more than It could, but potentially. You see yeah, the old but... movies when they're horses and they're standing on something, holding a horse, and they riding in a wheel. <laughs> yeah. they do, you know what I'm saying? Got a little bat bounce. You know what I'm saying? You know, nowadays, the new version of it, you know, the little things with the wheels on it. You know what I'm saying? They got the two wheels on the side. You know what I'm saying? And you lean forward a little bit and it go. You lean backwards and it go backwards. You know what I'm saying? Like the little thing. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's kind of how the, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how the chariot You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you got a, you got a horse on the front of it. You ride on the thing and you didn't have to balance in the same way. But you gotta imagine you standing on this thing. You standing on this thing. You got to, you know, you gotta hold on to the thing. That thing go too fast. You, know, yeah, you, gotta, you, know hold on to you gotta hold on to the horse. You gotta hold on to the thing. Like you know what I'm saying? This, that, another. You know what I'm saying? The horse do something crazy, you'd be done. Now you talking about a stagecoach? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? The Cowboys. And you watching me play Red Dead Redemption? That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? But, but that's what we. That's what we had. So we got all these horses. All these horsemen, right? Keep going. Oh, uh, actually, hold uh, hold that. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Y'all probably don't remember we read this, but I told y'all we was going to go back to it. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Might want to read Kings too. I think he's going into more detail with, uh, with what he was doing. We get right into Rehoboam after that. You go right into Rehoboam after that? Yeah, so we might want to see Kings out real quick. All right. Well, chapter we on. We on 10? Yeah. All right. So we'll go to 11. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17. Give me verse, what I want, like 9 or 10? Uh, probably. Hold on, relax. Lucky number. What are you talking about? Why do they say that? Because in a dice it. game, if you shoot a seven on the first row, you win. Uh, they, they got that you want like okay. a little bit after 14. A little bit. So let me just, you want to start 14 or 15? Yeah. I'm trying to, 15. Uh, you want 15. 15. It's Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15. Watch what the book say. You shall in any wise set him king over you, whom Yahuwah, God, shall choose. Mm -hmm. One from among your brethren that you shall set king over you. That's you right. You may not set a stranger over you, which is not your brother. Watch this. But he shall not multiply horses to himself. He shall not multiply horses to himself. Right? <laughs> a lot of the things that the Most High God call out in our laws because he knows what's going to end up happening to us. So you get King Solomon, and these people start bringing him all these gifts. They start bringing horses and all this stuff. He keep it, so he start build, building stalls to keep all these horses. He starts supplying these horses to all these uh, this uh, horse uh, uh, horsemen to all these horses. Yeah, horses to all these. Uh, he start he start putting foot soldiers to all these horses. You know what I'm saying? Putting his soldiers, you know what I'm saying? All these horses. They got chariots. They can ride around, but he multiplying all the horses. Book told him, don't do that. Right. It's a reason why, because now with everything, all the glory that he getting is turning into pride. What's that about? Oh, that's my bedtime. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that thing tell me 915. Start getting ready for bed. You know what I'm talking about? Get to it. Yeah. So 
this is what's happening here, right? Uh, let's go to First Kings. First Kings. Hold on, hold on. Oh, you want to keep going? Hold on. Yeah. Let me see. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people of, nor cause the people to return to Egypt mm -hmm. to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as Yahuwah has said unto you, you shall henceforth return no more that way. Mm -hmm. Neither shall he multiply wives unto himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Mm -hmm. So you see all these different things, what's happening? Gold was like, you know what I'm saying? He had so much gold that silver was like nothing. So you know he had silver too, but it was just like, it, just was, it didn't have no value. It was just like, we got so much of this stuff. It's crazy. So he multiplied silver and gold. He multiplied horses. And let's go back to 1 Kings. What else wasn't he supposed to multiply? He can't multiply like you're trying to run. So you don't, he wasn't even paying attention. He wasn't. He wasn't supposed to multiply what? Horses, wives, silver, and gold. Those are the four things, right? We know he already multiplied horses. We know he, we know he already multiplied gold. Mm -hmm. And we know silver is worthless, so we can assume that. You know what I'm saying? That was, you know, he had a bunch of that too, right? Okay. So let's see what else. What's left? Wives. Wives is left. Let's see. It's 1 Kings chapter 11. Uh, we're on 10, but hold on. Let me see when you get to the part. We own 10? Mm -hmm. Not 11? Well, we read... We read... Uh, we need to find the equivalent to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just want to make sure we don't miss nothing in 10. We could go to 11, but I'll make sure we don't miss nothing that Chronicles might have missed. So let me scan it real quick. Pick the balls again. All right, we start at 11. All right, let's go. This is 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 1. First Kings, chapter 11, verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by strange women? Uh, they had three eyeballs. That's right. Women is not from Israel. He liked it. You, know, you, ever, you ever seen them like, you know what I'm saying, them adult men? You know what I'm saying? Never mind. I'll say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't not say that. You know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, well, Uncle smiles. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, our homeboy's like that. <laughs> you know I'm yeah. I'm going to leave it alone. I got myself in trouble with that one time. You know what I'm saying? Just my woman like, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes people like women that's from a different place. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 don't, they don't share the same background. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? That's what Solomon was into. He was like, sweet milk and magnesia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, it might not. Yeah, now they went. They, they might not have been like, the earth he was on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that boy. But he uh, like, definitely wasn't from Israel. He, yeah, he liked them things, though, you know what I'm saying, from different places. You know what I'm saying? He like, I ain't never seen that before. You know what I'm saying? I want you too. You know what I'm saying? So he loved them strange women. So watch it. And you, and you see, because people were coming from all over the place to see him. Right, so it makes sense because he would see women from all different parts yeah, of the world, and it probably would be kings trying to get his good graces, like yo, take my daughter. You yeah, like, all I'm types of stuff happened. Marry my Remember, daughter. as soon as, as soon as he got in, who daughter did he get? The Egyptian was it the Egyptian? Uh, the king daughter, of right? Egypt, yeah. right? Pharaoh's daughter. Yeah, it was like, right, yeah. so as soon as he had the king of Egypt, you know what I'm saying? They they probably getting along. He ended up getting with his daughter. He married. All right, so now let's keep reading. Watch this. But the king Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, mm -hmm. of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn you away, turn your heart away to, after their gods. Right? So now Solomon is dealing with the same women that the, the scripture and that the law told us never to deal with. Right? He told her never to deal with these women. Right? And he, as the king, he began to marry these women. Right? This is the wise, this is the wisest man on the planet. So he know better. It's not a matter of him not knowing better. This, the reason why I want to harp on these points is because although he was wise, although all the people honored him, gave him glory and all those things, all that stuff turns into pride. If you don't maintain righteousness to the word, 
right? So he doing that. All these people are coming to him. It turns into pride. He begins to disobey the most high God. He doesn't keep himself humble. He doesn't keep himself closed, right? He starts to open up to all the stuff that's in the world. But well, watch this. Keep going. It's tempting. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Mm -hmm. Solomon claimed clave unto these in love. Mm -hmm. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. 700 different wives. And 300 concubines. That's 300 a thousand. different concubines. That's like a thousand. Concubine is, is, is like a servant wife. Right? So think of a concubine like you got a wife, but her role is to, is to be a servant. Right? So you got, you got a thousand different wives. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's like that's a lot out of control. Work. That's like a lot of work. Well, probably not for him. That's crazy. He probably see him one time. And it's just like, okay, you're committed to me and you just go off. You know what I'm saying? He probably don't never make his way around to see his, seeing these wives again, right? He's probably seeing him one time, deal with him one time, and that's it. Right? But that's the situation that he found himself in, right? Multiplying wives, multiplying horses. Multiplying gold and probably multiplying silver too. Right? Keep going. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Mm -hmm. And his heart was not perfect with Yahuwah his God, as was the heart of David his father. Mm -hmm. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Right? So now, one of the things that the Most High God told us is. Don't deal with these people of the other nation because they would do what to us? They would cause us to turn against our God and go a whoring after their gods. In other words, we would try to follow the customs of their God. Right. So the most I God told us, do not mess with these other people. Don't make no deals with them. Don't give your daughters in the marriage with them and don't let your son marry them. Right. Have zero dealers with these people. Do not mess with them. Solomon goes, he begins to mess with some of them because he got all these options. He enjoys women from other cultures. And so he brings them in and that's what he does. And you got to imagine you got a thousand women, a thousand different women. You might get to, like. Six hundred of them might be Israelite women. And after a while, you looking like, you know, what I'm saying? Well, like something a little different. Give me that exotic thing from, uh, you know what I'm saying, down in Saudi Arabia. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? What's that, what's that girl that was with the Queen of Sheba? You know what I'm saying? He probably a couple of them from Greece over there. He probably got a couple, you know what I'm saying? He probably got a couple white ones in there too. Who knows? Right? Because they coming from all over the world to see him. Right? To pick up his wisdom, pick up his stuff. So he starts seeing and he starts dealing with some of these women. And then as he did with them, him being wise. Think about it. You got you got to put yourself in his shoes, right? I'm wise. How do I become wise? Because I'm inquisitive. I like to figure stuff out. I like to pay attention to it and see it and understand it. So much so that I can teach people about the trees and the darn birds and all this stuff. How am I learning about the trees and birds? Because I'm watching trees and paying attention. So he probably pay attention to little details. Remember his brother? Remember his brother? His brother came up to him. His brother was like, yo, yo, yo. You know what I'm saying? He, he asked his mom. You know what I'm saying? He asked Solomon's mom. He's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you uh, ask Solomon to hook me up with old girl? Mom's is like, yeah, 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 I'll do that for you. Don't worry about it. She come in and she asked Solomon. Immediately, Solomon understood. He's looking like, no, no, no. Old girl was with my dad. His brother, you know what I'm saying? Absalom, he lay with my dad's wife when he was trying to take over the kingdom. This boy trying to get me. Because he pays attention to all of the details, right? He obsesses over the details, perhaps, right? So then imagine women, women that he thinks are attractive. He gets into them. He gets into the detail, right? But they got other gods. What is he going to do? Oh, let me understand how other gods work. I ain't interested. I mean, I just want to understand how they work. And that's how you get sucked in. Because although he's wise, you have to have restraint. All of us, right? We have to be able to say, yeah, no, that ain't for me. Right? There's a lot of people in their mind like, oh, well, you try, whoever heard, well, you try everything once. 
try anything once, it makes sense until it don't. No, you don't try anything once. That don't make no sense. Right? You get to trying everything once, then you get into stuff that you can't get yourself out of. That's why a lot of people are strung out on drugs. A lot of people stuck in situations that they can't deal with. A lot of people got bad habits that, that, that they can't get rid of. It's because they sat there and they tried something once. And now they can't get out of it. Right? Sometimes you got to know wisdom will tell you, nah, that just ain't for me. Right? It ain't for me. You ever heard somebody say, well, you know, God is still good because, you know, if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be where I am today. Don't be talking about mama. Don't be talking about mama. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about. But that's, but that's just the way that we've been conditioned to think, right? So many people have repeated that to us that even we begin to repeat that as if it's a, it's a good saying, but it's not, right? In actuality, we could have been in a much better place had we not gone through the things that we went through. Had we obeyed God and had we done the right thing, we would have avoided a lot of the mess that we went in and our minds and our, our habits and our behavior wouldn't be so tainted, right? It'd be a little bit easier for us. But what happens is we always want to live, right? We always want to take these chances. We always want to have the attention of, of, of somebody. A lot of stuff that we do is for attention, right? I want to get the attention of this boy. Or I want to get the attention of this girl. Or I want this person to like me. Or I want them to like me at my job. Or I want to get this promotion. Or I want to pass this grade. Or I want to do this, right? And it's always for somebody attention. Guess what, guess what we rarely ever base our decisions on? Is God going to be pleased with this? We think that's corny and we think that's unrealistic and we think all this stuff. No, that is life. That's the stuff that's going to have you all right. You position yourself to think, is God going to be pleased with this? If I got two options, which one is the most high God going to be more pleased with? <laughs> that's stuff to keep you out of trouble. And you end up at the end of the life with a lot of opportunities and a lot of different things and, and you feel weightless, right? You ain't got so much weight on you. The more sin you commit, even if you turn to righteousness, even if you end up getting it together, you carry that weight with you though, the whole time. You carry that weight. It's a heavy deal. Every sin that you commit, it's a heavy deal. It stick with you, right? And that's what happens. Some people don't know it's sticking with them. That's why they just stuck in these cycles in their life and they depressed. And they try to hide their depression. They try to cover it up and they try to do different things, right? But in real life, that stuff is sticking with us, right? That's why we got to turn to God and let, you know what I'm saying, just kind of get it right. Because it don't, it don't get better if you keep doing it. Don't get better if you keep doing it. You got to find a way to address stuff, right? And you got to avoid being, for y'all, you know what I'm saying, y'all avoid even getting in that situation, right? All the little foolish stuff that y'all sneaking and doing now, you stop doing it now. Right. Because otherwise you're going to end up being in a situation where you're stuck doing this stuff. Right. That's what happens. That's what that's what sin is. You ever heard somebody say it's impossible? It's impossible for people to stop sinning. Right. The reason why people say that is because it feels that way, because you keep wanting to do it. You're addicted to it now. And it's not going to always be the same thing. It's going to be different stuff. Oh, I'm going to lie over here. I'm going to cuss over here. I'm going to sit here and have sex over here. I'm going to do this over here. All these different things that we're going to do. Right. You get stuck to each one of them. And then you get sad. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. But then, oh, this happens and you want to do it again. Oh, and I shouldn't have done that. And then you want to do it again. And it's a cycle. And that stuff kills you on the inside, little by little. Right? You can avoid all of it. Otherwise, you get in a situation with, with King Solomon. Right? Where you get trapped. And you got all the people. All these people love you. All these people think you're great. All these people think the most high God sitting there like, I'm not pleased with you. Right? I'm not pleased with you. And that's the worst thing for us. Right? That got to be what we live for, is being pleased. Uh, pleasing the most high God, rather. Keep going. Let's see. And Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And went not fully after Yahuwah, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem. And for Moab, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. <laughs> oh, boy, it's about to make five times. 
And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was and the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Yahuwah God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, mm -hmm. and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, mm -hmm. but he did not keep that which the Lord commanded. Mm -hmm. That wherefore so the look, Lord said unto him, look, look, look at what happened just now, right? He said he appeared to him twice. Let me make sure to mention that. The Most High God said he was angry with him. That he had turned from the Most High God, the same Most High God that had appeared to him twice. This is the reason in the beginning we say anything that you, any supernatural experience that you may have can be used against you in the day of judgment. Because that's what the Most High God thinks about when we sin. When we turn from him, that's what he, that's what he thinks about. He's thinking about, oh, you did, I appeared to your butt two times and you still disobeyed me. Right? God don't just appear to people. I gave you a vision and you still disobeyed me. I gave you all them chills down your spine when you were hearing that word and you still disobeyed me. Right? These are the things the most I got to think about. Like, okay, well, I didn't get this to everybody. I gave that particularly to you. You had a gift. Everybody was telling me, oh, that's a gift from God. Everybody was, everybody was explaining this stuff to you. And guess what? You still disobeyed me. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as for as much as this is done of you, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I commanded you, I will surely rip the kingdom from you. And will give it to your servant. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding in your days, I will not do it for David, your father's sake, but I will rip it out of the hand of your son. Howbeit, I will not rip away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad, the Edomite. He was the king's seed in Edom. He was of the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass. When David was in Edom and Joab, the captain of the host, was gone up to bury the slain after he had smitten every male in Edom. Mm -hmm. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. Then Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him into, the, into Egypt, Hadad being yet a little child. And they arose out of Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them out of Paran. And they came to Egypt unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, which gave him a house and appointed him victuals and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife his sister of his own wife, the sister of Tephanes, the queen. And the sister of Tephanes bare him Ganubath, his son, whom Tephanes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Ganubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the captain of the host, was dead. Hadad said to Pharaoh, let me depart that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said unto him, but what have you lacked with me? That behold, you seek to go to your own country. And he answered, nothing. How be it, let me go anyway. And God stirred him up again, stirred him, stirred him up another adversary. Reason, the son of El Eliada, which fled from his lord, Hadad Ezer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men unto him and became captain over a band, which David slew from Zobah. And they went to Damascus and dwelt there and reigned in Damascus. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, besides the mischief that Hadad did. And he abhorred Israel and reigned over Syria. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother name was Zeruiah, Zeruah, a widow woman, even lift up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he left up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. And the man Jeroboam, and the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, had made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he had clad himself with a new garment. And they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him. 
and ripped it in 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, take thee 10 pieces. For thus says Yahuwah, God of Israel, behold, I will rip the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give it to 10 tribes, to give the 10 tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel. All right. So you look at all these things happening, right? All these different things happening. You got Solomon is about to die or dead, right? You have his enemies then kind of circling around the kingdom, right? So you got one guy that's been kind of, kind of, he been low, but he always been an enemy the whole time Solomon's there. He just ain't had no power, no strength, right? So he running Damascus. That's up north. Then you got another guy down south. He in Egypt hiding out, waiting to go back home to eat him, right? He hear, he hear Solomon dead. He right. like, David dead. Huh? David. I mean, he heard, he heard David dead. David and Joab are dead. He heard, he heard David dead. He go to eat him. So now he down south for Solomon. Right? So now up top and below, you know what I'm saying? He got his enemies. Then on top of that, within, you got Jeroboam. Who is Jeroboam? Jeroboam, just a young buck. But that boy, a bad boy. Valiant man. I ain't scared of nothing. And I stand on top of what I do. You say anytime the book say a mighty man is valid, I mean he with the he with the yeah, he a killer, other boy yeah. a killer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now you had Jeroboam there. Solomon see early Jeroboam, like, okay, yeah, now Jeroboam, that's a real one there. So he said, Jeroboam, you know what? Can you run all of the northern tribes for me? Right? I just need you to run the northern tribes for me. Jeroboam, like, no problem. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. But you know what? I'm from Ephraim. That's right next to Judah. And you built up Milo. Right? Jeroboam might be feeling the type of way like, man, you know what I'm saying? You ain't really get the resources. I mean, you hooking up where your dad was. You hooking up where you were. You hooking up all of Judah. You ain't really give us the resources like that over here. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really build up my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't give me, you know what I'm saying? You ain't really give me the support by it, perhaps. That's what he thinking. So he going down, moseying along. Then the prophet come. What's his name? Ahijah? Ahijah, yeah. Ahijah come. Take his garment. He rip it in 12 pieces. Or Ahijah. Right? Rip it in 12 different pieces. And he told him, you take 10 of them. Because that's a prophecy. Right? The prophecy is, the most high God already told Solomon, I'm going to rip it from you after you die. Right? So now, his, 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 uh, his, uh, his garment is ripped in 12 pieces. Now watch the explanation. Read it again for me. And he said to Jeroboam, take ten pieces. For thus says Yahuwah, God of Israel, behold, I will rip the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to you. Mm -hmm. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel. Because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon. And have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in my eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgment as David did his father. Mm -hmm. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for, my, for, uh, for David my servant's sake, mm -hmm. whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom, kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto you, even ten tribes. Mm -hmm. And unto his son will I give one tribe that David my servant may have light. Always before me in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the city which I have chosen me to put my name there, and I will take you, and you shall reign according to all that your soul desires, and shall be king over Israel. Mm -hmm. And it shall be if you will listen unto all that I command you, and walk in my ways. If you do what I say now, watch this. And it's always a condition with God. The Most High God will always give you a condition. It ain't never just no, 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 no uh, unconditional love or unconditional promise or anything like that. No, no, no. You hold up your end of the bargain, I'll hold up mine. That's how it works, right? If not, all bets are off. Watch it. And do that which is right in my sight to keep my statutes and my commandments as David, my servant, did. Mm -hmm. Then I will be with you and build you a sure house as I built for David and will give Israel unto you. Mm -hmm. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt. Unto Shishak, king of Egypt. Why would Solomon seek to kill him? Because Solomon knows. Solomon already knew. He didn't hear from God already. Like, listen, 
This is what's about to happen. I'm going to rip it from you. I ain't going to do it in your death. I'm going to wait until you die. So Solomon knows after I die, one of these boys is coming for me. Y'all know he pay attention to the detail. So Solomon already probably saw the play. He looking at it like, if somebody going to take this thing from me, who would it be? And it got to be somebody that will take everything except Judah. You know who you know who be feeling a certain way about Judah? That boy Jeroboam. And I put him in control of all of the northern tribes. You little, you know what I'm saying? Now he thinking about it like, you look, he catch him. He looking like, oh no, kill that boy. Get rid of him. You know how Solomon think. You know, Solomon came into the game getting rid of these boys. You know what I'm saying? So Solomon looking at it like, get him. He's a traitor, trust me. Other people probably looking like, what you mean? He, no, he, he wrong with you, you know what I'm saying? Trust me, he's a traitor. They get to hear him whisper, like, oh, no, you're right. He is. All right, we'll go after him. Right? Because Solomon see the play. He know it. He wise. He understand it. Watch this. Keep going. And Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, mm -hmm. unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was mm -hmm. in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the books of the acts of Solomon? And the, and the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. So Solomon had a son named Rehoboam, right? And then you also have Jeroboam, who was just prophesied to have the northern kingdom. So when we come back next week, we're going to start talking about how the kingdom splits, officially splits, right? It's been kind of split already a couple times. Right. But now it's an official split where you have two kings that are going to go two different paths. And this path is going to stay. It's not going to be unified again until Yahushua take the throne. Right. So it's important that we kind of understand how this play out. The reason why this play out all came because of sin. Right. Another thing that we're going to start paying attention is uh, attention to is the. Uh, the sins of the father going to the third, the, the, the third and fourth generation. All right. So we're going to start counting these generations of the sons and we're going to see all the stuff that the, the sons have to deal with as a result of their dads. Right. As a result of the sin. The reason why I want us to pay attention to that is because it is going to be our sin that creates challenges in our children's life. Right. And that's why we try to tell y'all to restrain from sin. That's why we have to restrain from seeing ourselves so that things don't get worse for everybody because it just creates challenges for everybody. OK. Any questions? Let's pray out.